Welcome to this session on the Power Pack Grip Band Steel from Greytech. In this session today, we're going to concentrate upon the concrete pan tread type and also take a look at its integrations with the landings and the additional bearer bar features that are available. So welcome to this session on the Power Pack for Advanced Steel from Greytech. And in this session, we're going to take a look in particular at the new tread type that we have available for this version. For those of you not familiar with the power pack, look for the power pack ribbon and then come to the stairs and railings vault and then look for straight stairs, which is the first tab here. Under here, you'll see a series of sub tabs available and these are the different types of stairs that we can create. In this instance, we've used a two flight L shape to create this form and we turned on the top and bottom landing elements. You would then browse within the macro to the tread sub tab here and then come to type. Presently at the moment, it's obviously showing the very basic form of a flat plate. If we change to this new type here, which is the folded pan type that you'll see available, you can see the form of the tread changes. Initially, it will come in with a basic form shown as is on the screen here. And now you can set about editing the various elements controlling the tread. These are found under the dimensions tab here. And then we go to the general sub tab and you'll see three fields available here that the user can enter values in and change. Obviously the material thickness, the overlap value, and also importantly, the depth of the concrete pan. Other fields available here are actually for information only as they pull other information from within the macro itself. Some of those you'll be familiar with, rise and going for the basic setting out of the stair. Others not so familiar, with like RF1 and RF2, and we'll talk through those as we go through the corresponding details tabs. I changed the details tab one. You can see there's a series of checkbox and active fields. If I uncheck these, you'll see various elements disappear within the tread form itself. So these are controlling the various fold elements that you see at the front and rear of the tread arrangement. So there we've turned off the front and the rear elements and we're just left with a flat plate. So let's just pop back on the nose fold RF1, which is the internal fold that returns from the base of the pan to the nose position. With that turned on, we can come to RF2 and we can activate that and that will work upon the rear element of the tread, creating the riser fold that returns at an incline angle based upon the overlap value. And also as part of that, you can see there's a nose fold RF2 that's created, which is a horizontal overlap element here, creating the nosing element at the nose position. If we change to details two, we can see that there's some additional tabs available. One of those is introduce a vertical face element at the nose of the tread. If we activate that within this part of the tread, you'll see a vertical element appear here and certain fields become available again that the user can interact with. Similarly, if we go to the rear element of the tread, we can activate this checkbox here and that will start to introduce this indent fold in the rear riser element of the tread. You'll see it appear within the dialog here. And again, the fields become active that the user can change those as they wish or require. So now we've changed the form of the tread. So we can see the initial form has changed and now we have these other elements available and there's obviously various options and combinations that the user can use to control this within the dialogue. Similarly, if we come along now, obviously one of the other elements that you might want to consider is obviously landings. So we have the bottom and top landings turned on and we've put these elements linked into the features sub tab here. So obviously this works using the tree technology here that's in our macro. So if you select it all and then started to interact with it, it would change all these elements within the various dialogues at the various corresponding points of the stair. So the bottom, the intermediate and the top. So I'm turning on the nose fold there. So you can see that it's put the nose fold on the bottom of the stair there. And it's also actually introduced it at the top landing position there. And it is at the intermediate position as well. So let's do the heel position here and introduce that as well. 
and this will come in by default as an upturn 90 degrees so that will introduce a fold element at this position of the landing plate itself there obviously if you wish to change it you can put in upturn to angle of tread which is one of the sub options available from the drop down menu and this will now introduce a riser fold within this portion of the tread obviously it's also you can see there's a vertical element put into the tread there but we still don't have the create lip fold so you can activate that as well and that will put the returned lip into the landing plate element as well If we just change to covers two, we can now see obviously a lot of it is being controlled as well to do the same as the tread because you'll notice that the indent feature has also appeared within the landing plate arrangement. That's because we have ticked the same as treads, so it's automatically picked up those values. If you want to do it different, you would uncheck this value here, and then these elements and fields would become active, and you can change them accordingly. So obviously that's probably perfectly fine, but obviously the bottom landing and the intermediate landing here as well, so we can see those elements there, obviously forming part of the tread. And at the top of the staircase, you may wish to obviously consider carrying on with another flight of stairs. Maybe it's a slightly different arrangement, two flights instead of three, I'm not sure. It depends on the stair configuration being used. So you do have options obviously with that at the top landing because it filtered through the branching of the tree macro to obviously be the same as everything else. So obviously we did tick that to have under here so let's just go and change that and we'll just go up to 90 degrees and this will now change this element here within the top landing so say the landing was abutting a concrete wall or maybe a platform or something that was made from a different structure you can put a fold in there and obviously you still have an option to change the field and adjust the return of the fold similarly there is a, a downturn fold as well available within the option here. I've seen some people downturn the fold as it abuts something, even though the, the tread is being filled with concrete. So let's just put that back to the upturn fold there. And obviously with that, you probably wouldn't go into covers two to actually do anything because you've made the change there. Even though it says it's the same as the tread, it's actually being overridden by this value in here as we've set and obviously this value here create lip fold won't be available because you've only just set it to a plain upturn 90 degree fold so that's the basic form of the stair now created with the stair tread itself so moving on from the tread we're just going to come to the connection types and we're just going to go back here to the tread tap and under here we see connections so those of you who have used the macro before will be familiar with the first two or three here which is the welded the normal plate connection and the angle connection but this, this version we decided to introduce some new types of connections and that was uh, basically came out of the option for bearer bars as we've turned them so selecting this type here will instigate the first of those options which is fundamentally a flat plate or a square bar can be introduced to the underside of the tread and more importantly to the rear element the riser element of the tread so obviously to see that i just need to rotate the model around a little bit so we can see underneath here so you can see that we've got uh, two segments introduced here obviously uh, this is a flat plate and if we come to the next tab the general tab here we can see that we're on plate. So this is actually a plate element from advanced steel. Um, you can have a flat profile. By changing the dialog here, it will activate the profile selection field under here. Presently, it will be defaulted to a flat bar, but there is uh, an option in here if you want to, to come down into here and you can scroll through until you see a square bar there we are uk square 
and I know this is an option sometimes used in different countries so we added that in as well so obviously the normal selector options are available here you can change the different fields as well so the shorten the first edge and the second edge again activated by making entries within the dialog fields here obviously the welds tab is activated as well so you can see the options available there to control the welds between the various elements so let's just come back to the type here and go to the next one which is the angle type so it's slightly different to the normal angle type that you see because again it will introduce two sectional elements into the support element connecting to the stringer and the tread so i'm just changing that there and again you'd come to the general tab here and you can see the option for angle is available plate is not available under this it's only angle sections that you can come into here and obviously if you've got an odd legged angle unequal angle uh, you can chain with your alignment if you so wish again you have the first edge and the second edge fields available for you to come in select you can put negative entries in if you want to as well depending on where the, you want the angle to be placed within the arrangement also you can uh, uh, sort of chamfer the corners or notch the corners off do a corner cut which is a standard option within advanced steel so that's been introduced into the dialogue here as well obviously welds tab is available as well under this so just coming back to the type again so i just want to come back into the main drop down list here and we have the third type that we've introduced which is a folded bearer arrangement and in this case we're going to introduce a folded plate or a folded section so again changing to the general tab here we can see initially it's coming in as a plate at the top here so activated within the dialog again you have a couple of fields you can go in and change the thickness and the width under here and then you can come obviously to a profile so if you want to actually make it a, a flat profile so that's a flat section profile that's formed uh, from a folded profile element within advanced steel you can change that in there and similarly again you control these fields which control obviously the length along the base of the tread pan or the riser bearing element here so that's along the incline face there and similarly obviously there's uh, welds available as well so those are three new options which we've termed bearer bars obviously for the interaction in this version with this particular tread type while we have that turned on i just wanted to draw also your attention here to the landing connections because obviously we have to make some interaction with the landings so we've got obviously the the folded form there so you can introduce different types here so the same as you did before you can still put those kind of elements in here so if you wanted to put a flat section or an angle section make those connections as you would do in the landing you can still do that so obviously i'll come in here so now depending on which type you end up with you may end up with a slight overlap value in there because obviously the the arrangement for the folded form obviously comes back into the landing area but again you can come and adjust that if you want to so under here there will be options to adjust what you want to do and uh, in this case i would probably set whichever particular branch of the landing you want to be on it doesn't always apply so if i just come back into here under the tread type and come back into connections and if i come back to say the the flat plate type because that is putting an element underneath the pan and against the riser element here so this riser part of the tread it will actually remove this element here so the sort of the, the clash i suppose only occurs at that option in there when you have that so again you can adjust the measurements again so if you went back into the landing connections 
obviously you're coming back under the type here which you've set to be a flat plate or maybe it's an angle type or whichever type you want to use around the landing there is an interaction and again you obviously have various dialogue fields that are available for the user to change as required so we have tried uh, to integrate that fully uh, obviously within the arrangement of the stair tread and the landing types uh, currently so that is a, a very quick run through of the basic elements that come with the new tread type that's available in this version of the power pack for advanced steel from Greytech.